Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, well, it's another day, and uh, here is another article by Kotaku. Are they not broke yet? I I, I don't know. I did. A lot of these sites, um, we went through the BuzzFeed listicle era, and then you get kind of the garbage take era. It feels like we're just stuck in that era. And I don't know, like, I, I don't know who's reading this stuff. I mean, people, so many people on the internet with these sites are just hate reading um, the articles. That's that's the only purpose to do it. So let's do it, Dark 2. Uh, anyway, a couple of you sent me this article. It says, uh, Fallout TV series creator says, Pleasing fans is a fool's errand. Um, all right, fine. Um, and let's read a little bit of this article. It says, as an artist, you can't always please everyone, especially if you're stepping into an established fandom. By the way, whenever his son says, uh, you can't always please any everyone, I always feel like uh, they're just setting, they're setting it up for but here's the thing I like that I know a lot of the rest of you don't like, but fuck you. That's that's always kind of the tone I feel it's going. Anyway, Jonathan Nolan, the creator of the upcoming Fallout TV series for Amazon Prime, seems to understand that. In fact, he recently said that trying to please fans is something of an impossible task. Uh, during a recent press event attended by UK Lifestyle, blah, 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 Nolan said he didn't create the series to appease players of the game. Figuring out how to make other people happy, Nolan said, is kind of a fool's errand. As such, he explained that artists should focus on making art that makes them happy and says he's done that with Fallout, which hits Prime Video on April 11th. I don't really think you can set out to please the fans of anything, he said, or please anyone other than yourself. I think you have to come into this trying to make the show that you want to make and trusting that, as fans of the game ourselves, we would find pieces that were essential to us and try and do the best bit, uh, version. Um, while he doesn't intend to pander to diehard Fallout fans, Nolan doesn't plan to deviate too much from the series lore either. He's a fan of the franchise, saying Fallout 3 damn near ruined his life. What? The chokehold the game had on him was part of the reason why he wanted to co-create the show to begin with. And then he goes on to say, uh, It started for me with Fallout 3, which devoured about a year of my life. I was an aspiring young writer at that point and almost derailed my entire career. It's so ludicrously playable and fun. Seriously, the games were just incredible. Such a rare and unbelievable thing I've gotten to do twice in my career to take something you love and to get a chance to play it in the universe to create your own version. First go around for me was Batman. The second time was Fallout, a series of games that I absolutely loved. Um, then it talks more about this uh, this TV series that's coming out. Well, um, let me start in reverse a little bit. Um, because, first off... Um, I don't know if you're saying I'm, I'm a huge fan of the game. This game near ruined my life. I don't know. Um, that doesn't sound great. I'm just saying um, that I it, it, that doesn't sound like exactly the best way to to promote your love for this game by talking about how it derailed your entire career and almost I don't know. There, there's some hyperbole there. I get it, um, but uh, you know it's not the big. It's just kind of odd. It's, it's just kind of odd to to promote in that way. But let's talk about the first part of the sentiment, because this is something that um, we've heard many places, and it's something that a lot of game journalists and movie journalists and comic journalists love. They they love this. They they eat it up like, like absolute crack of, you're supposed to make things that entertain yourself, not the fans. Now, they don't say it as any kind of wisdom, because there is a tiny piece of wisdom in there, and we'll get to that. But what they like about it is to use as a dunk against people that say, I don't like this. And then they say, well, it wasn't for you. And you shouldn't be, you should write art to please the fans. And you shouldn't do, people, they, they take things to extremes. And we've seen that plenty of times in comics where it's like, you shouldn't make comics to please the fans. You should make comic. and Brian Johnson did it as well with Star Wars, is like, you should subvert expectations and you make something you love. That's what art is. Art isn't just giving people what they want. Don't give people what they want. All well and good, except... This isn't art by its traditional definition. This is commercial art. And sorry to say, comic books and games and movies, unless you're uh, filming a passion project on your own dollar and you have no intention of making money, are commercial art. Now, you might argue that something like Savage Dragon is, you know, it's a creator's vision. The creator's doing what he wants. He owns it. He's, uh, it's it's all his and he can be, you know, arguably it's, it's his art and it isn't commercial art because he clearly doesn't care about the sales. Savage Dragon is clocked in at under 5,000 copies sold quite often in its run. And the, the owner, creator, 
of it doesn't seem to be that fussed about that. It's it's fine. And and by the way, much respect. If you're happy with your sales and you're happy with it and it's your property and it's your thing to do what you want, then I, yeah, agreed. It it it, it that's it, that's not necessarily commercial art. It can be just art because it's yours. You're not ruining anything established. You're not taking somebody's property and fucking it up. It's it's all yours. But if you're talking about Batman, Spider-Man, The Avengers, um, other titles, I mean, you would argue Walking Dead at this point, even though it was Kirkman's that he he um, he ran. Still, by the time they start getting into a franchise, you've got TV rights going on. You've got, you know, you've, you've sold it. It becomes more commercial art. Right now, if uh, Kirkman decided to relaunch Walking Dead and completely change the tone of the entire book and turn it into kind of a space odyssey and just kind of, you know, that parody issue. What do you do that for issue 100 or 50? I remember there's like a little parody of what would happen if it had, had Martians invade and all the rest. It was, it was just wacky and crazy. Um, if he suddenly did that for real, um, you know, all the people he sold the rights to would be pissed and have something to say about the art transformed into commercial art. So, you know, Fallout is commercial art. It's it's not somebody's plaything to do what they want with. It it actually has a property and a brand and, you know, a company behind it. And and so, you know, maybe you get them on board with your vision, but there's a big difference between I'm doing this for me and I'm doing this for you know, this, this is uh, somebody else's property that I'm trying to make money off of. It's a huge difference there. So I, I think this, but on top of all that, you know, putting that aside, the statement of you can't please the fans or you shouldn't try and please the fans or don't make art for the fans, it's, it's taking a bit of truth and turning it into something absurd. Of course, I'm going to be exaggerate here because that's that's what this analogy is. It's an exaggeration. Of course... Artists should not just be chained to their desk and writers shouldn't be chained next to them. And the writer's like sitting there helpless going, um, I'm ready to write the story, but I need to know what the fans want. Quick, let us do a focus group of the fans. Oh, it'd like half the fans want Spider-Man in the black costume. Half the fans want Spider-Man in the red costume. So I'm going to write a story where he's in the red costume for half the comic and the black costume for the other half. And then some of the fans want him to fuck, you know, black cat. So he's going to do that, but then he's going to go back to MJ and they're going to get married again. But I'm also going to have the shocker show up and, and murder MJ because some people want him to be single. I, all I can do is what the fans want and every issue will just be done by committee. The fans will tell me what they like and then I will create it. Nobody's asking for that. And so many times when you see these interviews, that's how these these creators, these artists, these writers portray it like... Well, the fans have a lot of demands, and you can't give them what they want. Well, no shit. There's there's millions of fans in some of these properties, not comics, but in 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 some of these these properties, there's tons and tons of fans, and of course, you can't give them everything they want verbatim. What you can give them is to understand what it is the fans like in mass, the the feeling, the vibe, the uh, atmosphere of the story, all of those other pieces. Um, you know, that's that's what the fans want. Fallout has a theme. If you decide to direct Fallout and you're like, you know what? Uh, I understand there's a theme of this this move or this game. Uh, but what I'm going to do is a coming of age story against a girl. And I'm going to kind of deprioritize all the monsters and other things in this land. And I'm going to make it a lot more about, a, you know, somebody who's uh, trying to discover themselves in a world that has been turned upside down. Um, that's that's not an accurate view of what it is. You know, a superhero comic um, is not, you know, if, if you're taking something like Superman, and you're like, I'm going to write Superman, but really what I'm interested in is Lois. I, I don't actually find Superman that interesting. So we're going to deprioritize him, and we're going to have very little of him in the uh, comic. And then we're going to have Lois, uh, you know, basically quit her job at the, uh, at the newspaper, and she's going to become a uh, judge for a cooking reality show. Or maybe like a home decorating show. She's going to become the new host of uh, like trading spaces. And so the comic's really going to be about her flipping houses and, and getting, uh, you know, doing doing that. And that's that's what the comic is. And so we're going to stop doing, uh, you know, there won't be any soup, there won't be any villains and uh, there won't be any Superman. And that's that's what the comic is now. Nobody wants that. 
Um, I, I mean, I'm sure some sick bastard out there wants that, but but that's not what it is. And as, as commercial art, you shouldn't try and make it that. The comic has a theme. It has a point. And so being an artist saying, well, this is a story I want to tell is just selfish. It's arrogant. It's, uh, you know, don't, don't be a megalomaniac. Just you, you need to, you know, you are hired to do a job. And if the second you show up to the job, you're like, I'm going to do the story I want to tell. Screw what this uh, comic is about. It's, uh, this is, I, this is mine now. We've seen a lot of that. It doesn't work. It's an insult to, uh, frankly, to the, the property and it fails. Um, and then you can blame the fans. Well, fans didn't accept my vision. There was a bunch of hate speech on Twitter and all the rest. All right. <laughs> sure. That's what I think about that. Anyway, thanks for listening.